folks, Joseph A. Sabor here, and this is a true honor for me because I'm finally going to review of a film that I saw back on November 21st, 2007, which turned out to be one of my favorite Disney live action animated fairy tales of all time. And not only that, but it also stars one of my favorite actresses of all time, Amy Adams who just recently turned 41 this year since Thursday. Yep. And since then, then I've been watching all of her films. Yep. And I've been doing that ever since with movies like Junebug, Doubt, um, Julie and Julia, uh, American Hustle, you name it, all these films. So I decided to review, as we speak, Enchanted. Yep, this was a film that definitely made me become an Amy Adams fan. Yep, a movie about a young princess who wants up in an animated fairy tale land called Andalasia, who wants up uh, falling in love with a handsome prince named Edward, who unfortunately has a stepmother, an evil stepmother named Nerissa. Yep, and her plan was to actually push uh, Giselle, yep, which Amy Adams played, of course, inside a well, which she wants to land into a sewer, which turned out to be a live-action modern-day New York City. That's right. Yeah. This is the Blu-ray that I bought uh, back in 2008 at Hollywood Video when it was available for only $29.99. Yeah, it was, it was very expensive at the time, but this was when I was starting to get more Blu-rays, uh, when I first had my first Blu-ray player. Yeah. And yeah, it looks really cool. Because it has uh, just uh, <laughs> the uh, just the uh, the Chapman sweepstakes. Yeah, they also have this on the DVD as well. Yeah, and there's also the, the scene selections on the back. There's even the artwork with uh, the Enchanted Blu-ray. <laughs> and I know even in the back as well. Yeah, the spine. Looks really cool. Yep. I figure it'd be fine because that way I can have this movie as a combo pack. I also have this on DVD as well, which is right here. And it's uh, the Target exclusive to this movie. You can even see the back as well. It looks more different compared to the, the Blu ray version. Yeah. Yeah, this is the slipcover. Yeah, same as usual. Yep, and here's the uh, <laughs> the bonus disc. Yeah, you can even check on the back as well. Yeah, same picture with Amy Adams as Princess Giselle. <laughs> yeah, also has the um, the sweepstakes. A lot smaller compared to the Blu-ray, and the scene selections with the DVD included. <laughs> yeah, looks really cool. And also, I even have the book. Yep. <laughs> On the back too. And even comes with a mini book. <laughs> Just to go with it. That I got a that I got at Best Buy. And the soundtrack. <laughs> yeah, with all the music inside. This is what it looks like. Yeah. yeah. Um, that's why it's one of my favorite movies of all time. The only thing I wish I had now is the movie poster. And if I ever get that, my life will be complete. <laughs> yeah. And I know they're actually uh, planning on making an upcoming sequel to it. I'm, I'm not so sure when is that ever going to happen, but... They're actually planning on it with a new script. So let's see what happens. 
because it was mentioned back in 2014. I just hope that we get the original cast back because, and I hope it's a better sequel. You know, I, I'm not saying it'll be better than the first movie, but I just hope it's a, a very good sequel. So that way it'd be so much better. But yeah, it, it's basically a, uh, a self-parody and a homage to all the classic Walt Disney fairy tales that we've been getting ever since the 30s. And we've been getting them ever since with movies like Snow White and Seven Dwarfs, you know, Cinderella, Sleeping Beauty, and, and you name it. And then we started getting other modern classics like The Little Mermaid, Beauty and the Beast. Pocahontas, Aladdin, uh, yeah, and you name it, we, we had tons of movies like that. And that's why Disney's been one of the best animated studios and live action productions of all time. Yep, and it still remains that way. So let's get back to the film. It stars Amy Adams, Patrick Dempsey, James Marsden, Timothy Spall, Idina Mansell, Rachel Covery, Susan Sarandon, Jeff Bennett with Kevin Limba, who's also the director of the film, John McLaughlin, you know, a singer, also some cameo appearances by Paige O'Hara from Beauty and the Beast, Jody Benson from The Little Mermaid, Judy Kahn from Pocahontas, and Julie Andrews. It's written by Bill Kelly, and it's directed by Kevin Limba, who also did a Goofy movie. The movie begins set on an animated fairy tale world known as Andalasia, a place where there's talking animals and happy endings, yeah, which is happily ever after for that matter. A wicked stepmother known as Queen Nerissa who's played by Susan Sarandon, had fred that her stepson, a handsome young prince named Edward, who's played by James Marsden, will soon find his true love, which means that Nerissa's position on the throne will be taken over. So one day, Edward and Nerissa's henchman, Nathan Neal, who's played by Timothy Spall, successfully captures a troll but Edward rides off to the cottage of a beautiful girl named Giselle, who's played brilliantly by Amy Adams. After hearing her singing about true love, knowing that Nerissa's riches, Nathan Neal sets the troll free just to get rid of Giselle. But Edward saves her just in time, and when they meet together, they instantly fall in love, and they are planning on getting married the very following day. However, Nerissa had witnessed everything, so she meets Giselle while the peasant runs off just to get wed to Edward. Nerissa wants up disguising as an old hag and tricks Giselle and exiles by pushing her from the whale that wants up going straight down to the real world of Earth by falling through a portal that's under a sewer which turned out to be a modern-day New York City's Times Square. Yeah, which I know she was wearing her uh, her puffy white dress, you know, just for the wedding. <laughs> yeah, and <laughs> that was really interesting that she was wearing that. I know they also use a stunt double for, for Amy Adams too when they started doing those scenes when she was already being chased by, by a bunch of cars and all of that. <laughs> yeah, and there was even a scene where she wants up meeting a, uh, a little guy you know, who cl claims to be grumpy. <laughs> oh, that was funny. And the little guy was like saying, What, are you for real? Okay, well back to that. Um, meanwhile, a divorced lawyer named Robert, who's played by Patrick Dempsey, prepares to propose for his longtime girlfriend, Nancy Tremaine, who's played by Dina Mansell. Much to the dismay of Morgan, which happens to be his young daughter, who's played by Rachel Covery. 
And while Robert and Morgan are headed home on a taxi cab, they see a very confused Giselle. You know, they spotted her on top of a uh, of a pink castle on the billboard, which I know Giselle was trying to enter inside. Yeah, a brightly lit pink castle. She actually mistaken for an Andalusian palace, but luckily Robert rescues her after she falls off, and he begrudgingly permits Giselle to stay at his apartment at the assistance of his daughter. At their apartment, Giselle sits on a couch just so she could go to sleep because, of course, she yawned. <laughs> so then, uh, the very next day, Pip, who happens to be Giselle's chickmunk friend from Andalasia, witnesses the events of Giselle's fall through the portal and alerts Edward to it, so they embark on a rescue mission to save her. Edward's chances upon Giselle's whereabouts was spotting a TV news report on her being interviewed. However, he is unaware that Nathan Neal, who has been dispatched to New York City by Nerissa, trying to eliminate Pip after it, the chickman discovered a poison apple plot, that Nerissa and Nathan Neal had conducted to kill Giselle. Meanwhile, Robert decides to keep Giselle close by, giving her in lack of means to survive on her own. Yeah, there was a scene in the movie was when, when, when she was already woken up, you know, she realized that Robert's apartment was a mess. So she winds up cleaning up and singing to that song, Happy Working Song. And yeah, this is one of the funniest scenes was when <laughs> suddenly all these rats and all these animals were coming right between the, the tub and all, all the other places. <laughs> uh, between the apartment and from outside. <laughs> yeah, I mean, because with all of her powerful singing yeah she really lets everything in and, and they just clean up the entire place <laughs> oh the, and yeah by the time uh, Morgan spotted it you know he woke up Robert and <laughs> and they're trying to get rid of it too <laughs> outside oh man that, that was really funny so anyway Giselle actually questions uh, the divorce lawyer about his relationship with Nancy because yeah this is when she finally arrived on, on his doorstep yeah I know Morgan opened the door and while uh, Giselle was just taking a shower yeah with all these birds you know just covering uh, yeah, her nakedness yeah, with, with a towel <laughs> yeah I know because he accidentally slipped uh, once uh, the birds actually knocked knocked him behind and then he fell uh, into the floor with uh, Giselle and and suddenly Nancy spotted them thinking that you know Robert's actually falling in love with another girl yeah you know that cliche so then when Nancy left this is where he gets really upset and he decided that he should let uh, Giselle go but of course she wants up wearing a beautiful dress that she just made out of his curtains. <laughs> yeah, she definitely looks very cute, beautiful. Yeah, with that, huh, with that luscious dress that she's wearing. Yeah, now she also, you know, is a redhead too. You know, I, I adore redheads. Yeah, but I, I can deal with blondes and brunettes also. Okay, but yeah, <laughs> and I know because she was trying to explain to him about about the meaning of. Of the fact that he's he's just ready to propose for Nancy and all that, and yep, and Giselle was telling Robert to sing to her, so that way she she'll understand. <laughs> and I I remember because this is when he said it sounded like something out of a Hallmark card or something, as you know, <laughs> as Robert said, and and she says, is that a bad thing? <laughs> With his relationship with Nancy. They decided that they were going to help the pair reconcile by sending flowers and the tickets to the king and queen's costume ball. But suddenly, an angered uh, Nerissa, who has continued on spying on the events, makes plans to come to New York City after, after Nathan Neal failed twice to poison Giselle. Yeah, and I know they did. 
So once again, Edward is still trying to look for Giselle. And I know he did because he spotted on the news. And when he did, that's when they finally get to spend more time together. You know, just for a little while. Just to see how this is going to turn out. So they're like spending all day, you know, going to New York City, you know, just getting something, you know. Yeah, which that would be later on too. But also, uh, Edward was tr was trying to take uh, Giselle with him t just to go uh, to his office, just just to find out about their divorced couple. Yeah, which then turned out to be a disaster. So then, yeah, he offered uh, Giselle to leave, but yeah, it only gets even worse because they thought, you know, she would be lost anyway. So yeah, that's when she started eating, and then they were still talking about that they're ready to um, to prepare for this event that they're going to do, and then and that's when we get to hearing that that's that wonderful song called "That's How You Know." <laughs> yeah, I, and yes, you could tell because this is a musical, so it works so well. It only had a few songs in this movie, but you get the idea. It, it was it was done very well too, very choreographic too. The way they did this scene, yeah, it it was just beautiful. It it brought me a tear to my eye too when I saw that scene. Oh yeah, because it it does take you back to all these wonderful musicals that we saw. Once they spend more time together, Giselle and, and Robert begin to develop feelings for each other. While ever eventually finding her at Robert's apartment. While Edward is eager to take Giselle home to Andalasia and finally marry, she insists that she should first go on a date. Still conflicting about her feelings, Giselle promised to return to Andalasia after the ending of their date at the King and Queen's Ball, which Robert and Nancy are also attending. Narissa arrives in New York City, but the Queen powers sends the Seward manhole covered flying across the city which actually destroys a Coca-Cola sign as it glitches. Giselle and Robert finally dance as if they were the only couple in the room. And yes, this is where we get to hear a beautiful song called So Close by John McLaughlin. Yeah, and yes, they definitely dance together with Giselle in, in a beautiful brown dress that she was wearing. And and Robert wearing a uh, a luscious blue suit that he has. Yeah. Definitely has that, that style of what a lot of prints would actually wear. Just amazing, because it's part of the ball. Anyway, Edward and Nancy had sensed the attraction between Giselle and Robert and also discovered a mutual attraction between themselves. And they did, because um, at the climax of the ball, Narissa appears as an old hag and offers the last poison apple to Giselle, who wants up, as we speak, taking the first bite. Yes, yeah, very similar to what we saw in Snow White, because they've been, this is a tribute to, to all these films. So she leaves her true love behind as she takes a bite and falls to the floor unconscious. And this is where it has that moment where we actually reveal the true love's kiss. And yes, this had became a cliche in all the later Disney films, like Maleficent and hell, even Frozen had that idea. And, and much recently, Once Upon a Time. And I'm saying to myself, after Enchanted, why are we getting that same freaking cliche? I get the point already, okay? There's no such thing as true love's kiss. It's like it's like they just wanted to make it more realistic in that sort of way. I mean, it, I'm sorry, but after Enchanted, it doesn't work on any film out there. I just hope Disney doesn't continue to use that cliche in movies. Because it doesn't work. I'm sorry, it doesn't. Okay, it works in Enchanted because it makes sense. It's supposed to be set... In, in a modern day world. But back to that, that's when we found out that, and I hate to give it away, but I might as well, we found out that Edward tries to um, to kiss uh, Giselle, but the power didn't work. So then when Edward finally gets to kiss uh, Giselle, she's woken up. 
Yeah. But of course, Nathan Nell is already being sick of being manipulated by Nerissa because of what happened. But of course, it happened as the clock strikes 12, but Nerissa used this moment of distraction to break free from Nathan Nell's grasp and transform into a giant blue dragon. Yeah, and I know she even talks uh, as a dragon. So when Robert shields Giselle after Nerissa threatens to kill her, they have taken Robert hostage instead. Giselle takes Edward's sword and to then follow Nerissa out of the window and up on top of the Woodworth building. With Pip's help, Giselle successfully defeats Nerissa, who falls off of the Woodworth's building and lands into the street, disappearing in the sparkles as she dies. After almost falling off of the roof themselves, Robert and Giselle have shared a passionate kiss with each other to embrace, while Edward and Nancy find themselves in love to part to Andalasia and back into the manhole. That's when we found out that Edward is heading back home to Andalasia as he and Nancy are marrying together. Yeah, that's when we saw <laughs> uh, Nancy, you know, who had a cell phone and it was already ringing and, and he found out, wow, wow, it has clear signal or something. <laughs> I know, that was a funny moment. And then Giselle has running into a successful fashion business and forming a happy family with Robert and Morgan together while Nathan Neal becomes the best-selling offered on earth as does to Pip in Andalasia. And they all live happily ever after. The end. Well, I gotta say, this movie was without a doubt one of the best Disney live-action animated films of 2007 and it's also very fascinating intriguing enchanting you know, mesmerizing uh, wow and even uh, very uh, visually striking with tons of great 2D animation that they use. Yeah, they also mix in with CGI for mostly for the live action shots of of the the chipmunk uh, Pip that they use in the film and and all these other CGI effects for the the dragon and all of that. They they have a lot of that in the movie too. Not to mention they they actually filmed this movie that's shot uh, with two aspect ratios. One that was shot with the animated sequences from a smaller 1.85 and then the whole movie that's in live action sequence was at 2.35 so that means you get to see more of the details that went into it yeah and I like how they show all the sequences they put into the film especially with the um, all the the dance numbers yeah the musical numbers that they put in and by the way, they were all composed by Alan Minkin, who's been best known for composing all the Disney films, such as The Little Mermaid, Beauty and the Beast, and Aladdin. And also uh, Stephen Schwartz, who teamed up together for Pocahontas and The Hunchback of Notre Dame. They, they teamed up again for this movie, and it works. Yeah, definitely the perfect team since, uh, you know, Mankin had collaborated with uh, the late great uh, Howard Ashman, and who also did uh, the Little Shop of Horrors remake from 1986, and as well as Little Mermaid and Beauty and the Beast. Yeah, because Steven Schwartz also did uh, Wicked, he also composed the film too, which that means that Idina Menzel was actually joined in for the cast to play Nancy in the film. Which I know originally they were going to get Idina Menzel to sing. There, there was supposed to be a duet with James Marsden, which happens to be the title sequence for Enchanted. But that's been scrapped. And they, and suddenly, you know, Idina wanted to actually have her acting ability for the film. 
It's not her first film. But, because I know she was doing the movie Rent and, and even the other film, As the Dusk, with uh, Colin Farrell. But it was the first Disney film that she's ever participated in. And, and it was actually very refreshing to see her, you know, actually playing a role and not just singing all the time. But it's just, it's hard to believe, but this movie inspired for the fact that she later went on to uh, sing and, and did the voice acting for Elsa in Frozen. Yeah, she was great. But of course, the real star of the film is not other than Amy Adams, because after all, she was the right choice for the movie. She was a lesser known actress at the time, you know, spawning mostly independent films and some comedies that she did. And I know I've seen them even before or after. She's the right choice to play that role because she definitely reminds me of all the other Disney princesses that we ever saw. And she's definitely have, as we speak, the style. Um, she's also uh, very spunky. You know, she also shows uh, that she's very optimistic, romantic, uh, independent. And very charming. It's just this is exactly what a princess should be like. You know, very cute. You know? She's definitely like the the character Ariel and the Little Mermaid. You know, the the actress uh, Jodie Benson doing the voice of the character has the mannerisms. You know, it, it was perfect. Yeah, because she has luscious red hair. You know, she has uh, very bright white skin. Yeah, with lipstick and yeah, lovely, uh, gorgeous blue eyes. Wow, it's no wonder, you know. I I just can't stop thinking about her ever since I've seen this movie. You know, whatever dress that she chose for the film, this was just really very striking to see. You know, Adams playing this role perfectly. And she still will be remain as one of the best actresses of all time and definitely my favorite. Patrick Dempsey um, is also very good in the film as Robert, considering that he's playing a, a divorce attorney who uh, doesn't believe in true love or fairy tales, you know, like Happily Ever After and all that stuff. Even though he lives with a daughter of his own, happens to be Morgan, played by Rachel Covery. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. who actually loves uh, princesses. Yeah, she even wants to be one too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I know Patrick Dempsey's been best known for the TV show Grey's Anatomy. And, and I know th this show came out at the time when it was popular. It's still on TV today though, <laughs> as of 2015. Yep, it's been 10 years since the show's been on. And yeah, but I know Patrick Dempsey's been best known for other films like Can't Buy Me Love, uh, Run, Coupe de Ville, all his other stuff that he's been doing. He's also a juggler, too. Yeah, very well-known juggler. He was very young, and, yeah. he, you know, he can even do all of that stuff, you know, while acting. And, you know, it's very charming as an actor. James Marsden, you know, who's always been best known for roles like Disturbing Behavior, uh, Sugar and Spice, and of course uh, the X-Men movies. He was very good as uh, as a young, handsome prince. In fact, he sold a lot of roles in, uh, in that scene. <laughs> yeah, especially when he was wearing all that. Yeah, because all this time he's just wearing the, the red, uh, <laughs> that the puffy red uh, suit that he has on. Yeah. With, with a mighty sword that he has on his hand <laughs> just to go stop all these uh, villains for stealing his true love <laughs> oh man it, it was funny too because one of my favorite scenes was when he was actually got up out of the uh, the sewer where they were already working on it and suddenly <laughs> he actually stabs the, the bus yeah where well, the bus driver was just <laughs> yeah a black uh, bus driver lady, you know, came around saying, Nobody stabs my bus and gets away with it. <laughs> oh, that was one of the funniest scenes in that movie. And 
And yeah, there, there were a lot of scenes was when uh, yeah, Nathan Neal was played by uh, Timothy Spall, who's just always, you know, <laughs> throwing the the chickmunk uh, Pip around whenever they, he comes up with all these plans to to actually um, kill Giselle, mostly from Queen Nerissa's uh, evil plans. Yeah, and he was very good too, uh, Timothy Spall. Yeah, he's he's been best known for films like uh, uh, White Hunter, Black Heart with Clint Eastwood. Yeah, that was a Clint Eastwood film that he did. And I know he went on to do the film um, Sweeney Todd. Yeah, the Tim Burton adaptation that came out the same year as this movie did. Yeah, also good. Yeah, also uh, Susan Sarandon who played Play Queen Larissa. Wow, I mean, who would have thought that an actress like Susan Sarandon can play a character this evil? Yeah, I, I love the makeup and the costumes that they gave her. You know, she's definitely sort of had a mix between, you know, Maleficent and all the other villains that we have from Disney. And, yeah, you know, and the fact that she's even disguised as a an old hag just like Snow White. You know, and Seven Dwarfs. Yeah, that, that works so well. Yeah, because she even has the poison apple. Yeah. Yeah, well, everybody was good in this film. I mean, there's no doubt about it. They were definitely given the right choice to play the roles. Because I know originally they were going to get other actors. And they were, you know, given the script by Bill Kelly. Who wrote the script uh, since 1997. Wow. <laughs> That's like 10 years apart after this movie was finally released. But yeah, they were right for the roles. and <laughs> Yeah, I mean, and, and Giselle was pretty much given a, a Snow White kind of character. I mean, yeah, she, she is like Snow White. I mean, yeah, because she loves uh, all the talking animals. She even gets to talk to them and, and just feel free to whatever she does. She even creates her own dresses because she is a... She now becomes a fashion designer later on, so <laughs> that's it. really interesting. Yeah, and, and Amy Adams had an incredibly singing voice, something I never heard before. She sounds almost like a mix between Jodie Benson and Paige O'Hara, in, in that sort of way. But her singing voice was so amazing that it actually melts my heart. And gives me a tear in my eye because I heard her singing voice in movies like Miss Pettigrew Lives for a Day and not to mention The Muppets. Yeah, from 2011. Yeah. <laughs> it just proves that she can definitely do all this because I know she had done some um, some stage shows before, you know, when she, yeah, long before she became an actress. She has done some. A lot of activities, you know, when she was young. And she definitely remembers it by heart. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I know, she also sings together with, uh, as a duet, with James Marsden. And even James Marsden has a good singing voice, too. Never thought I would have heard that before. <laughs> yeah. Because he usually does a lot of stuff in his career. Now I'm just glad they didn't get a musical artist to dub their singing voices because now because I know they always do this for animated films and all this other stuff, but then it just wouldn't sound right, and that that proves it. They could definitely sing very well. It just wow, <laughs> I just love it. I mean, it, it was just so amazing the way they shot this movie. I mean, New York really looks very beautiful too. I mean, especially Times Square. I mean. Yeah, while well, they were still, you know, playing the Wicked and all this other stuff. Yeah, so this is, they had a lot of references to to Wicked and even had a reference to uh, James Marsden's role in Superman Returns. And then it has, has tons of references of all the Disney films for its time. And it just works. And yeah, because it's supposed to be um, a self-parody and a homage to them. And, and yeah, it works. I mean, this movie deserves all that. And I'm just glad this movie's getting some airtime on TV. And I hope it continues to go on. There's no doubt about it. 
Because nowadays, you know, we're focusing more on Frozen than this movie. And that sucks because this was a better film. I mean, as much as I love Frozen, you know, because at least we got Idina Menzel and, and all the other good actors like Christian Bell and, and some of these other actors from, from all these TV shows like Glee. This one was, was much better because it does definitely show about what was it like if you're living in a fantasy world at this rate of fairy tale and you wind up in a portal which then turns into a modern day uh, city or t I mean it could be any other city and, and you can tell how magical it becomes even though everything just seems lacking in, in respect and that's just what's a shame about that you know but in the end it turns out that even a princess or prince from a fairy tale land can finally uh, relive the magic in the modern day world and yeah, at least you get to have fun and do whatever you want. I mean, no matter what happens. <laughs> yeah, and, and I thought they had terrific chemistry for um, Amy Adams and Patrick Dempsey, as opposed to James Marsden, too. You know, terrific chemistry together, no matter what. And, yeah, and, and I'm going to get back to Rachel Covery, too. She only had... Uh, Three movies that she did, although technically she only did two movies. Yeah, she did a film in 2005 with David Schremer and Janine Galofio, which is called Dwayne Hopwood. It was a movie from 2005. It was an independent film. Uh, I never saw it, actually, but I know Roger Ebert claims it's, his, it's one of the best films of 2005. So. But she's always been best known as Morgan in Enchanted. And, and she also went on to do... Annie, yeah, in 2011 for its probably musical, yeah, not the movie version from 2014, which I know that that one sucks, but this one is is just what it was. But yeah, um, this this movie had everything that was going for it. You know, beautiful animation that was 2D. Yeah, great animated sequences that they put in. That's done so well it almost looked like it came from a Disney movie. Because the animation was done by Baxter Anim Animation in um, Pasadena. Yeah. That was um, owned by James Baxter. So they really did all of that just to relive the spirit. Because this was at the time when Disney was really coming up with more garbage. And we hardly ever see any uh, 2D animation movies. And the last one that we saw was indeed... The Princess and the Frog, which came out in 2009. Yeah. We almost thought that the movie Tangle was going to have that. But unfortunately, it was all CGI. Yeah. It's, just, it's a shame, but that's okay. It, you know, it looks even better as it seems, so. But, wow. <laughs> I mean, this was a huge hit, by the way, when it came out on Thanksgiving weekend. You know, for its budget of $85 million that this movie was made for, it made it up to $340.5 million for its box office alone. You know, topping up the charts, it actually became the second highest grossing film since Toy Story 2. And that's really amazing. Yeah. And, um... Yeah, and, and Kevin Limba, you know, who's been best known for directing films like The Goofy Movie. Yeah, I mean, it, he did really did a good job doing this. Um, he, he really wanted to relive the spirit. I mean, yeah, because I know uh, we had a lot of live-action animated films like this before Enchanted, you know. I mean, there was Who Framed Roger Rabbit, which got the idea of actually mixing in uh, with all the with Disney, Warner Brothers, uh, Universal, yeah, Max Fletcher, and all the other uh, animated classics working together, you know, with Robert Zemeckis, uh, Bob Gale, and Steven Spielberg, you know, by making as we speak one of the biggest uh, live-action animated uh, blockbusters of all time back in 1988, yeah, yeah, with the late great uh, Bob Hoskins and. Christopher Lloyd, Kathleen Turner, and Charles Fletcher. And we also had other films, too, before that. I mean, we had Anchors Away, which uh, 
which I believe had uh, Tom and Jerry thrown in with uh, Gene Kelly. And we have all these other stuff too. Yeah, even Mary Poppins, you know, the Disney movie, you know, with Dick Van Dyke and Julie Andrews, who also did the narrator for this movie. Wow. <laughs> Also, uh, Kevin Lima did do uh, Tarzan as well. Yeah, Tarzan was another good movie that I love. And he also did uh, the sequel to 101 Dalmatians Remake. So I guess that's what he was going to go for. So, yeah. Um, and I love the soundtrack. Um, once again, by Alan Minkin and, and Stephen Schwartz. You know, they had a fascinating soundtrack with That's How You Know, Happy Working Song, and as well as True Love's Kiss, and, and of course, uh, So Close. There was even a song by Carrie Underwood, uh, the country music singer, who, uh, yeah, they even had a music video too, where she wants to becoming an animated uh, version of herself. That's based on the movie. Yeah. They also had um, the same music video, very different from hers, in, in Spanish, too. I, I even saw uh, a Spanish singer actually dressed up as Giselle. And she was wearing that puffy dress that, that she was also wearing. Yeah, You can find that on YouTube as well. and You can find all, all this other stuff uh, from the movie. It's, I mean, definitely check this film out. It, it's fun. It's exciting. It's very magical, too. And I'm just glad this movie got made. It's still one of my favorites, and I always will be, no matter what. So, yeah. So, anyway, I give Enchanted a magical, awesomely good time for a family film. Mix in with live action and animation. Five stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora. And I'll see you later. Bye.